Lovely Opinionated Vegan here. I'm talking about self-abandonment and how self-abandonment has affected me in my romantic relationships, my friendship relationships, my job relationships, um, my relationship to myself, my family relationships, and my relationship with the world. So... Um, I'm at this point in my life where I realize that the only way I'm going to find the right friends for me, the right mate for me, the right job or career path for me, is to be genuinely true to me. So like I was saying in the previous video, um... I want to just say, I am not a psychologist, I am not a psychiatrist, I am not a therapist, I am not a spiritual teacher, I am not a guru, I am not someone who knows it all, I am just a kind of the average fucked up American girl who's trying to find happiness and clarity through my own searches. And there are many wonderful teachers that I love who are helping guide me along this path. And um, so I'm just sharing my personal experiences and thoughts. Um, okay, so I just wanted to make that disclaimer that, you know, if you don't like what I have to say, just click away. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't work for you, keep on moving, okay? So, um... So I want to talk more about this idea of getting into a relationship with someone and trying to be the person that you, that they want you to be in order for them to love you over the course of my life. I never was presenting myself as my true self because, like I said, I was self-abandoning. So instead of arriving and saying, Hi, I'm an artist. I love to paint. I love to draw, I love to dance, I love to sing off key, and um, I love to be in nature, like my sister outlaw uh, said, I'm going to steal her quote, she, she said, I'm a very outsidey person, I'm not outdoorsy, so I'm not really into like camping and, and being all like that, but I do love to be outside. Um, so, so the thing for me was that because I had these insecurities and I did not believe that pursuing my artistic projects was the way to uh, a job or a career for myself, I stopped doing that. If you go into a relationship not being true to your own nature... And abandoning, self-abandoning aspects of yourself that are truly your joy. The things that bring you bliss and joy and bring you into a state of flow. Like Mahali Chikasent Mahali said, who wrote the book Flow, among his many other books. If you abandon those aspects or turn your back on those aspects or don't do those things, whether it's because of your own insecurities like me or because you feel like, you know, when I started dating my my children's father uh, eight years ago, he never came out and said, I don't want you to be a dancer. But he did say, I don't like to dance. And in our seven-year relationship, we went dancing one time, which was in the first two or three months of dating. So in the super beginning of our relationship, he took me dancing once and... It was fun, but it never happened again. And I remember one day I was at his apartment and I was dancing and stretching and doing my thing. And he had this routine that he used to do, this stretch routine, and it was very simple and basic. And I remember watching him doing it and having these feelings, this anxiety inside of me that said to myself, 
if I'm true to my own nature, I'm also taller than him. And I was like, if I am true to this self, it's going to intimidate him. It's going to make him feel bad. Now, of course, he didn't tell me, I'm going to feel bad if you dance. I decided that I didn't want to tower over him, and I didn't want to outdo him, and I didn't want to intimidate him. I wanted him to love me. So I decided not to dance anymore. And even though I had only rediscovered dancing after many years away, when I was living in California, I got into the Santa Monica School of Ballet. I don't think that's the name of it, but... And I started dancing adult ballet, and um, I was happier than I had been in many years. And I moved back to Jersey from California, and I started dating him almost immediately. Like, after two weeks of being back, we started dating, and we would see each other every weekend. And um, my sister actually worked in an office who's, who rented a space inside of a dance studio which is where I dance now. But for the first, I say, four years of being back in Jersey, I didn't dance at all. I didn't go dancing at clubs. I didn't go dancing in classes because I chose, maybe subconsciously, even though I remember the conscious moment, I remember, like I said, I was in his apartment in Queens and he went to the bathroom and I was dancing in his bedroom and I just had this feeling inside, like, he is not going to like me if I make him feel intimidated. And I chose to dim myself down. I chose to abandon that aspect of myself. And then many, many years of this relationship, I resented the fact that he didn't like to dance. It bothered me that when I was dancing in the living room that he would not dance with me. If I tried to reach out to him, he would stiffen up and not want to. And it irked me and it pissed me off and it hurt my feelings. But the truth is that he was like that when we started dating. Okay? So it's not like most of the time I think what's happening is that, again, I'll speak personally, all those times when I was dating someone and I had this feeling inside like, you don't really know me, you don't really understand me, you just don't get me, you don't get me, you don't see me for the real me, you don't love me for the real me, you don't understand who I am or what matters to me. And putting that on the other person, when I never filled out these parts of myself, is so unfair. So... What I'm trying to say is that if you are abandoning aspects of yourself because you think you should or because that's what your parents taught you or because that's what your mate wants, you're never going to find true happiness because you can tell yourself you don't need those things. You can tell yourself, no, my husband is more important than a dance class or no, my husband is more important than taking than painting or my wife is more important than, um, you know, whatever this activity that I like that she doesn't like is. I'm going to make my wife love me more because I'm going to give up this stuff that she doesn't like. Or I'm going to make my boyfriend love me more because I'm not going to do this thing that he doesn't care for. I'm not going to intimidate my partner by being my best self. I'm not going to intimidate my partner by losing weight. I'm not going to intimidate my partner by being healthy. Oh, my partner loves to eat, you know, meat and dairy and, and I'm a vegan. So I'm just going to kind of accept that he's doing this stuff and, and I think it's unhealthy, but I'm going to just accept him instead of realizing I can accept you all I want, but I don't have to accept you as my partner. I can say, I accept you as a human. You have, you know, the right to exist over there but you're not a good match for me if you're if you don't love the things that are so deeply important to me you know that's why now I'm single and I will absolutely not date a man who's a meat eater I will not and that's because I don't want to go through hell 
three to six times a day. Every snack and meal. I don't want to have to like bang my head or bang his head or have some kind of opposition or a debate or try to change him or try to control him or try to make somebody be something that they are not because just as I don't want to self-abandon anymore, I don't want any partner of mine to self-abandon. I don't want a meat eater who says, I'll go vegan for you. I really, really love meat and I don't even want to stop and I don't want to learn about why, but I'm going to do it just for you because ultimately that person is not going to be happy and then they're going to resent me and they're going to blame me when they're the ones who make that decision. So instead of looking for someone who's willing to just conform or comply to me, I want someone who is a real true match. I want someone whose energy is vibrating at that level already. You know, I want someone who is deeply interested in the earth and animals and love and kindness and health. You know, these things matter so much to me. And so I'm not going to self-abandon anymore. Um, I'm not going to date men who I don't think are attractive and I have to convince myself that they have nice eyes or, you know, date someone who doesn't love me because of who I, who I truly am, because I will never find love that way. And I know that now. So if that means I have to be single for, for many years or forever, I would rather be single and truly love myself and surround myself with friends and people who love me for who I am, then try to fit into a match with someone who's not actually a match. So that's why I think self-abandoning, you end up in miserable jobs, you end up, or you end up in a job where you're miserable, you end up in friendships that are not really happy, you end up in relationships that are not fulfilling and happy. And then your whole life is just unfulfilling and unhappy and, and depressing and feels like, you know, you're never getting what you really want. And that's because it starts with you, you know. So maybe like my ex, your dream is to make stop motion animation movies. And for whatever reason, he convinces himself that that's not valid. It's not important. And, you know, I've always tried to say to him, you know, it is a viable career because it exists and people love that stuff. And it's hard, but, you know, he's really, really good at that stuff. Um, but instead of developing those skills, he has spent many years developing other skills. You know, and he, he gets good pay. And, of course, my children benefit from having him earn good money, but ultimately they'll benefit better when they see their dad and their mom doing what's genuinely true to ourselves. So, um, so I encourage you to consider whatever it is that you love to do that for whatever reason you've been told is not important or valid, start to consider that it is important and it is valid and the world does need you and we do need you to do that particular thing that only you can do or maybe a million other people are doing it but you know what you're the only one who's going to do it your particular way and it doesn't matter like I'm making this video and you know what I have crappy equipment and I have limited time and you know I'm going to like Teal Swan and Ralph Smart who I love I'm obsessed with them you know Ralph Smart says don't don't waste time trying to be so perfect. So it's true, this video is probably not the best video. It's not super quality. But you know what? I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm not going to allow limitations or the appearance of limitations to stop me. Because if I make a bunch of videos that are kind of good quality, bad quality, but somebody, it resonates with somebody and someone says, you know what, please keep doing this because I want to hear what you have to say. Then eventually I'll get better equipment. You know, like I'm making a book, I'm illustrating a book and I don't have the best pad and I don't have the best markers and I don't have the best paintbrushes and I don't have the best watercolor. But if I allow that to stop me, like the other day I sent a picture of one of my drawings to my ex and he was like, oh, that's good. But you know, you should get this other pad. It's better quality. And you should get a bigger pad because of this and that. And, 
And he was saying things that were legitimately good advice. But what happened to me was I kind of got the message like, that's good, but it's not good enough. And if you continue doing it this way, it's not going to be good enough. And, and it derailed me because I said, oh gosh, you know, do I want to spend uh, two months working on this book that I'm making, but the pad isn't the best pad? Uh, and it's not big enough and it's not the best quality, you know, am I wasting my time? And I went way over 10 minutes, but you know, so I'm wrestling now every day with saying, well, I don't have the money to go buy a better pad and I don't have the money to go buy better paints, but I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to do my best with what I have because that's, what's going to get me to the next step. If I tell myself, well, I don't have the right equipment, I don't have the right supplies, so I'm just going to wait until I can, or I'm just not going to do it at all. I'm just going to go get a job, you know, working somewhere, doing something I don't care about. You know, where am I going to be in a year from now? Where am I going to be in 10 years from now? I'm going to be the same unhappy, unfulfilled person who has not developed. So, fuck it. I'm going to make a book with the not the greatest pad, and maybe I'll get it published and I'll get a little bit of money, and I'll be able to get a better pad next time. So those are my thoughts. Um, I'm going to come back to self-abandonment because this topic is almost never ending. Thank you for watching. Please click subscribe if you like what I have to say and you want to hear more. And uh, lovely opinionated vegan evolution. Thank you and have a beautiful day.